Fa show coming to you from Pure Africa TV. A very good morning. Uh, join me in the day for show. Uh, remember today is the 27th day of the month of April, of course, the uh, year is 2022. Year of the month of April, of course, you begin to think about the party primaries, you begin to think about the nominations. And of course, throughout the entire period, throughout the entire period of party primaries and nomination, the question has always been free and fair nomination. Of course, that's a big question that you can ask yourself as to whether the nomination, the party primaries have been free and fair, especially now that the month of April is soon coming to an end. And so uh, we are getting to the month of May. And getting to the month of May, you begin to think about the presentation of those uh, names that are suggested as the best running mates for various political uh, candidates, especially those that are eyeing the top seat. Of course, that's the presidential seat. And so, uh, talking about the month of May, soon getting, uh, remember, presidential candidates for various uh, political parties will be uh, presenting the names to those their preferred uh, running mates to the IEBC, Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. And so, the month of April has been full of, of uh, you know, nominations, party primaries, but interestingly enough, uh, you realize that uh, they were accompanied with a lot of, you know, a lot of chaos. Some were very chaotic. Remember what happened in Embu, a county, not just in Embu, but even in uh, Nyanza regions, especially for the ODM party, because the nomination was there, uh, though with a lot of chaos. Meanwhile, it's still going on. We saw yesterday uh, Mike Mubisonko now getting the ticket for gubernatorial seat. Uh, for Nairobi County under the Wiper Party. So these are some of the stories that we'll be talking about, especially when we get to the second bit of the show. Join me in the breakfast show. Remember, in the first bit of this particular show, uh, we will be interacting as usual. Remember, the, uh, the first bit of the breakfast show is such an interactive bit of the show. But getting to the second bit of the show, Remember, we'll be getting to newspapers whereby we'll be reviewing some of the newspapers, of course. I remember we have the Star newspaper, we have the Daily Nation, we have the Standard newspaper. Uh, what you need to do is to uh, not, not fail to uh, get that uh, particular bit of the show because the second bit of the show, and as usual in the third and the last bit of the show, as usual, we'll be discussing one significant uh, topic, that particular subject. Uh, that which is of public interest, that particular subject uh, which is uh, perceived as of public interest and significance. So uh, you should not plan to miss that uh, uh, particular bit either. Remember today, getting to the third bit of the show, we'll be talking about the subject of education. Uh, remember there has been very fixed and uh, you know, busy schedule and uh, very fixed deadline as far as the education calendar for this year has been concerned, especially for the year 2021. Remember talking about education calendar or education year, we talk about uh, 2021, especially uh, for the Form 4s and the Class 8s, especially for those particular candidates who are now transiting from um, one level of education to the next, those that are transiting from uh, uh, primary level to the secondary level and again those that are transiting from the secondary level uh, to the university level or even to the tertiary level. You realize that uh, uh, on, uh, third, on 3rd of May uh, the KCSC candidates, the class A's who had, re who had, who had uh, actually received their results and uh, they will be joining the high schools of course uh, there have been, uh, you know, says of the fixed uh, timeline. But the question I'll be asking you when we get to the third bit of the show, you as a guardian, uh, you as a parent, how are you prepared to ensure that, uh, of course, that entire process come to accomplishment? How are you prepared uh, to see that your boy gets to the secondary school, to see that your girl gets... Uh, uh, to the secondary school. Remember, that's a topic that we'll be talking about when we get to the third uh, bit of the show. Remember, the third bit of the show is such a participatory bit of the show because of the breakfast show. Meanwhile, uh, we are here to begin the first bit of this particular show. Remember, in the first bit, 
uh, what we need to do is to interact simply simply interaction during interaction uh, what you need to do is just let me know where you are tuned in from where you are watching from where uh, you are able to follow live this particular show from of course this is a breakfast show live from pure africa tv uh, pure africa radio my name is evans of the Ambo. join me in the breakfast show uh, remember we have a lot of stories of course the issues of iebc uh, we saw yesterday iebc now postponing uh, that deadline for presentation of running mates of course the present uh, presidential and gubernatorial running mates are now pushed to 16th of may but these are some of the stories that we'll be talking about uh, when we get to the second bit of the show meanwhile we are getting to the first bit of the, the show and join me even as the first bit of the show uh, this is the prepare show live from pure africa tv pure africa radio my name is evans of the join me and the brief as show begins. Show coming to you live from Pure Africa TV, Pure Africa Radio. My name is Evans of Yambu. Join me even as we begin the first bit of the show officially. Remember, in the first bit of the show, as usual, we always interact. What you need to do just to let me know where you are tuned in from, where you are able to watch. Of course, follow this particular show from uh, Pure Africa TV, Pure Africa Radio. Remember, all our social media platforms are already open, of course. Uh, you, what you need to do is to drop your comment there in our comment section. Remember, following through our social media platforms, our fan page Facebook is Pure Africa TV, Instagram Pure Africa TV, YouTube is Pure Africa TV. Remember, following through YouTube or following live from YouTube, uh, you need to subscribe as well to that uh, particular channel. I tell you, subscribe to that particular channel, you'll be the first one to get all the notifications because uh, coming to you from pure africa tv remember subscribing to that particular platform uh, will make you be at a position of getting all the latest trends or the latest updates of course uh, from pure africa tv remember also uh, you following through our uh, our pure africa tv official app you uh, can as well download our pure africa tv official app what you need to do is simple uh, just there you have your android uh, smartphone just get to your google play store or app store uh, their type patv official app and i tell you will be having our pure africa tv official app having that particular application remember it will be a very friendly platform of course for you uh, whereby you'll be able to get all the latest trends and the latest information of course are uh, coming to you both from pure africa tv and at the same time from pure africa uh, radio remember to get uh, that particular application and be at par with uh, 
others. Remember, we are also getting uh, we are getting a notification of calls and feedback from various consumers of that particular platform, uh, saying that it's a very wonderful platform. It's such a friendly platform, of course. All the information that we are tailoring, they are able to get them in the real time. And so do not be left out. Get to download your Pure Africa TV official app and be at par with uh, us looking at my comment section. Remember, it's the first bit of this particular show, uh, such an interactive bit of the show. Going by the comment section, of course, uh, I see you. Uh, it's called uh, Jessica, already tuned in all the way from Kisumu County. Thank you very much, of course. Uh, Sir Philip, I see your comments already tuned in. That's a week or two already tuned in all the way from Waondo. Um, Beta Sub County, thank you very much. Uh, of course, that's a Fred Leach already tuned in all the way from Kiambu County, thank you very much. Uh, Madam Melody already tuned in all the way from Mount Kenya University, Thika Campus, thank you very much. Of course, I see your comments. Uh, remember, this has, the, some of the comments I'll be going through uh, even as we continue the show, especially during the first bit of the show, uh, because the first bit of the brief I show always is always uh, uh, it's always uh, such an, an interactive bit of the show. Remember, you can as well tweet. Uh, you can as well tweet and tweeting. Uh, remember, Twitter. We are there as the Pure Africa TV hashtag. Right now is the brief I show. So. I'll as well get your tweets there and of course I'll be reading them in in time as we continue with the breakfast show. Remember you can as well drop your comments via our WhatsApp number. Of course the number is 0796840560. They'll be getting your comments in the real time. Of course I'll be shouting it up in the real time, especially during this uh, uh, particular bit of the show. Of course this is the breakfast show live from Pure Africa TV. Uh, pure Africa Radio. My name is Evans Obiambo, but remember getting to the second bit of, this, of the show soon. Uh, we'll be looking at the world of politics, we'll be looking at a bit of entertainment business. Of course, we'll also be looking at some of the stories that are transferring uh, from our various counties, from our various sub-counties, from uh, the local levels, of course. Remember, Pure Africa TV is your a destination of your choice uh, for both local content and local and uh, international content and not just local and international content but at the same time uh, loc at the same time uh, local entertainment and international entertainment and so you need international entertainment here you are at the right time in the right place you need local content here you are in the right place at the right uh, time of course you need international content here you get it you need local content those uh, that are transferring from the village levels uh, you of course get it remember today is the third day of the is the third day as the uh, kenyans so kenyan citizens continue viewing at uh, the body of the late president Danny, the late president mwai kibaki but the viewing was uh, uh, the, the viewing was officially opened, of course, officially uh, led by President Uru Kenyatta. That was on Monday. Yesterday was the second day of that particular viewing. Of course, uh, we saw Kenyans turn out in large numbers to view uh, the late President Mwai Kibaki's body. Of course, some of them, or of course, the majority of them, are of uh, the citizens, of course, across uh, various age groups were there, of course, uh, sharing the, uh, some of the achievements of President Mwai Kibaki as they paid uh, their last respects, uh, as they paid their last respect to uh, the late uh, President Mwai Kibaki. Remember, President Mwai Kibaki was the third president of the Republic in Kenya. So today, we are on the third day. This is the third day of that particular exercise of course uh, public still get uh, turn out in their big numbers of course uh, to get to view the body to get to view the body remember uh, this is the last day this is the third and the last day for viewing especially in the parliamentary buildings or in the parliament buildings uh, but remember soon the body will be taken uh, to Nyayo Stadium because uh, that uh, uh, that is where um, you know condolences and uh, of course uh, uh, eulogies will be made 
of course uh, in the Nyayo Stadium soon uh, of course before uh, the body will be taken to Otaya home on Saturday and uh, the body will be laid to rest in Otaya home of course in Nyeri County. Meanwhile uh, preparations for the burial are still are also uh, going on in Otaya home of course uh, uh, for President, the late President Mwaiki back in Nyeri County. And so on 30th of uh, April, that will be on Saturday, uh, the body will be laid to rest uh, as the Kenyans will be paying their very last uh, respect. Remember, those are some of the stories, of course, uh, that we'll be talking about when we get to the second bit of the show. Meanwhile, we are in the first bit of the show. Uh, live from Pure Africa TV, Pure Africa Radio. My name is Evans Obiam. Remember, uh, getting to the second bit of the show, of course, uh, the issue of indiscipline is also uh, captured when we get to the second bit of the show. Of course, we saw 10 rolls of bang uh, caught in Kisi, in you know, one of the boys' schools in Kisi County. 10 rolls of bang. Remember, yesterday was that uh, the first day students were reporting uh, to schools. Uh, from uh, from their holiday, they were reporting to back to school from their holiday, uh, whereby ten rolls of bank were, uh, you know, were caught in uh, some of the bags of those particular students. Of course, some of the, those boys, even as they were being checked, as they were being ushered back in uh, to the school. And so there's a question of indiscipline rising yet again. But this is a case uh, that uh, police are uh, continuing to investigate. This is a case that um, uh, its investigation is still um, ongoing as far as it is concerned. Remember, those are some of the stories that uh, are captured, of course, under the top news stories uh, that we'll get to talk about when we get to the second bit of the show soon. Uh, but remember, also during the second bit of the show, we'll also get to the newspapers, of course, we'll get to review. Uh, the newspapers look at what is coming up in the world of politics, in the world of business, entertainment. Of course, we'll also get to look at what is transferring in our various counties and as well uh, as uh, sub counties level to see what is uh, uh, going. But the comment section, thank you very much, uh, Jamasi James, following from uh, Transmara. Of course, I see your comments. Remember, during the first bit of the show, it will be such an interactive bit, uh, looking at the comment section. Remember, uh, you following through your, or following from your television screen, of course, uh, you using uh, you using the free-to-air satellite decoder, as you can as well participate uh, by dropping your comments uh, through our WhatsApp number or via our WhatsApp number, of course, the number is 0796840560. Uh, they will be getting your comments in the real time, of course, I'll be shouting them out in the real time, especially during the first bit of the show as we continue. My name is Evan Sobiabu, this is the Brief Show, live from Pure Africa TV, Pure Africa uh, Radio. I'm taking a very short break, but before that, let me uh, read the comments or uh, get to the comment section. Of course, those that are using the Pure Africa TV official app, I see you, Victor Wino. Already tuned in all the way from Mama Bay County, and there is David Osudi also tuned in all the way from uh, uh, Teka. Thank you very much. Of course, Rune I see you already tuned in. Emilia Tieno tuned in. Uh, thank you very much for choosing Pure Africa TV. Thank you for choosing the Breakfast Show. Uh, my name is Eva So, we taking a very short break. Coming next, I'll be getting to the second bit of the show, of course, looking at some of the stories. Uh, that we have today, especially those that are given a lot of emphasis, those uh, that are given a lot of, um, you know, weight, especially uh, during the second bit of the show. Remember, third bit of the show, I'll be asking you a question as to whether you have really prepared, you as a guardian, you as a guardian, uh, you as a parent, as to whether you've really prepared. Realize that uh, uh, the education calendar for the year 2022 is such a busy uh, scheduled calendar. Is that a busy scheduled calendar? That a fixed uh, uh, calendar. But are you prepared, especially uh, alluding to the fact that on third of uh, the month of May, our students are expected. Uh, our students, uh, those that sat for their KCPE examinations, 
are expected to join the form ones or to join form one or to join at the next level of education of course that's the secondary uh, level of education but are you prepared you as the you as the guardian you as the uh, you as the guardian you as the parent are you really prepared especially going by the fact that uh, the uh, the, the, the schedule uh, looks to be such a fixed uh, schedule then that particular timeline is so such a busy uh, timeline that's what we'll be discussing when we get to the third bit of the show uh, meanwhile we are in the first bit of the show continue staying with me and taking a very short uh, break uh, coming later I'll be back uh, with much more continue staying with me Papers, uh, of course, uh, to, look, uh, to look at uh, what is coming up in the various sections and various subsections 
of course, of these particular newspapers. But before that, uh, we will be looking at some of the top news stories, or some of the top stories, those uh, uh, that are given a lot of weight, those that are given a lot of uh, importance, especially uh, today during the breakfast show. Because looking at some of the top news stories that uh, are here today, uh, we see IEBC now postpones the deadline for the presentation of running mates' names until 16th of May 2022. Remember, this is an issue uh, that was to be settled on uh, Thursday. This is an issue that was to be uh, settled on Thursday. Remember, earlier on, IEBC had uh, scheduled the Thursday, or Thursday to be the deadline, of course, uh, 28th of the month of April 2022, uh, to be the deadline for presentation of the names of the running mates. Of course, talking about the running mates, I mean presidential running mates and the uh, gubernatorial seats running mates to the IEBC. Uh, but now we can see different political parties now breathe a sigh of relief as this uh, particular deadline has been pushed yet again to the 16th month, uh, to the 16th uh, uh, day of the month of May, of course, 2022. You remember? Various political parties, various political coalitions have been complaining, uh, complaining earlier on about that uh, particular fixed uh, deadline. Of course, we saw those that are allied to Azimio La Umoja, One Kenya Coalition, uh, complaining about the same, of course, terming it that it was very short. Of course, we saw the uh, secretary uh, in charge of that particular coalition, uh, Junet Mohammed. Uh, saying that the issue of running mate is such an uh, important issue that needs uh, you know a lot of time so that they can get to make up their minds on this particular subject and so uh, they were really uh, they, they, we, we saw them really complaining about uh, uh, that particular deadline and that saw them having meetings of course not one meeting not, uh, not one one meeting uh, they met twice remember uh, the Azimio La Umoja team and uh, IEBC met on uh, Monday and of course on uh, Tuesday and of course uh, on Wednesday, on Tuesday and Monday uh, to deliberate on this uh, particular subject. But uh, uh, interestingly, or uh, the product of that particular meeting is that it has been postponed. Remember yesterday they were, they were also meeting with those that uh, are aligned to Kenya Kwanzaa. Remember on uh, Monday's meeting, Kenya Kwanzaa Coalition did not attend that particular meeting. Uh, uh, rather we saw the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition team attending that particular meeting of course. Uh, finally it has been uh, agreed, uh, it has been agreed of course by the IEBC Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission. Uh, that uh, the deadline has been uh, rescheduled again and it will be on 16th uh, uh, on 16th day of the month of May because the year is 2022. Remember during that particular time, that is the time that um, uh, presidential flag bearers to various coalitions, to various political parties uh, will be presenting their running mates or the names of their running mates to the IEBC, not just presidential aspirants or the or presidential flag bearers again to the gubernatorial uh, flag bearers uh, for various uh, political parties for various um, uh, for, for various counties will be presenting their the names of their running mates uh, to the IEBC but what about the senators women representatives uh, members of county assemblies uh, remember for the senators, women representatives, and of course members of county assemblies, uh, that uh, deadline has not been, uh, uh, they, 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 of course they are still being treated uh, with the same, same deadline. Of course by Thursday, that uh, will be, uh, tomorrow they'll be presenting, on Thursday they'll be presenting the names uh, of the, of the running mess, of their running mess or uh, the names of those that are responsible for those uh, particular positions as far as various counties are concerned, as far as various uh, wards are concerned. And so, uh, members of, or, and so the leadership of various political parties will be presenting uh, the candidates uh, or the, the, the names of the candidates for senatorial seats, of course, uh, women representatives, members of county assemblies, 
uh, to the IEBC. Of course, the deadline is on Thursday. The deadline is on Thursday. That is the, the deadline only for the gubernatorial seats and the presidential seats are uh, postponed. Of course, they'll be presenting the names of their running mates, especially those that are bearing the, bearing the flags for those particular positions will be presenting the names of their running mates on uh, 16th month on 16th day of the month of may 2021 so uh, remember this uh, before that particular deadline was postponed uh, both uh, the coalitions uh, you know reacted to it of course they took it uh, as a very negative that uh, which was denying them enough time so that they could make up their mind on that uh, particular agreement or, or on that to settle on that uh, particular uh, point. Remember, uh, looking at Azimio Laomodia, you realize that uh, there was a task force that was formed uh, to decide the fate of the running mate. Uh, and that's why uh, it was being perceived that as a very fixed uh, schedule for them to decide the issue of the running mate within that uh, uh, short uh, time. But there's a very uh, task force that was formed and so uh, some of the names were already proposed by that particular task force. Among them, remember, we had the Waipa Party leader Kalonzo Musioka Nak, Kenya leader um, yeah, Martha Karua, of course, uh, we also have uh, uh, we, we, we also have Peter Kenneth, the former uh, Gatanga member of parliament, of course, uh, earlier son Joe was also uh, among uh, them. But uh, the, it is now the fate of that particular task force uh, to decide the fate of it. But again, looking at the Kenya Kwanza side, uh, uh, of course, it will be the deputy president to decide the fate of the running mate. Remember, the fate of the running mate, or the, this particular point of the running mate, has been that which has seen different uh, reactions emerging from various political parties or from various uh, political parties allied uh, to a uh, given coalition. Of course, the other day we saw those that are aligned to ANC party, Amani, a National Congress party, uh, proposing that it is Musalem Dabadi, or Musalem Dabadi should be uh, chosen, or uh, DP should pick Musalem Dabadi as his running mate, even uh, as the time draws closer and uh, closer. But again, uh, looking at the Azimiola Omoja side, you realize uh, that uh, various political parties or various uh, leaders that are allied to various uh, political leaders or to various uh, political party leaders within that particular coalition have been pushing for their party leader to be uh, chosen, of course, by the right Honorable Raila Moludinga for, uh, for that particular position, for that uh, particular uh, position of course we've seen a section of politicians pushing uh, that uh, the white party leader Kalonzo Musioka should be picked as the running mate when the time come of course uh, but what do Kalonzo say himself I realize that um, on his part he says that it's an obvious thing it's an uh, obvious and so to Kalonzo it's an it's obvious that is likely uh, to be picked but let's wait and see uh, what the task force will uh, decide on finally and how that will be uh, and what will be the fate of this uh, particular point on the run, running mate of course uh, by the sixth, by 16th the day of the month of May this entire fate shall be uh, decided and moving forward uh, to the moving, moving of course uh, before moving forward we saw all the coalitions of course uh, they are now satisfied with that particular decision of the IEBC uh, to postpone this, um, you know, to postpone uh, getting the names of the running mates to gubernatorial seats and uh, uh, to the running mates to various uh, presidential flag bearers uh, postponed to 16th of May. Of May, of course, we see uh, both the coalitions are satisfied with it, both the Kenya Kwanza coalition and at the same time the Azimio La Umoja are uh, satisfied with this, uh, with the, that particular um, uh, decision made by the IEBC, of course, after thorough consultations and uh, after a discussion, of course, by these um, uh, political coalitions. But let's switch gears and look at uh, the next uh, 
uh, story, of course, that which is also given away today in the paper show. You see, the, the third day of the body viewing, of course, today is the third day of the viewing of the body of the late uh, President Mwai Kibaki. Of course, uh, uh, President Mwai Kibaki was the third uh, president of the Republic of Kenya. Remember, today is the, the, the last uh, and the third day of viewing of that particular body, of course, in the parliament uh, building. Remember, this um, entire prayer process was uh, initiated uh, or uh, was begun officially when it was led by President of Kenya. Uh, President Uru Kenyatta, of course, that was on Monday. Uh, there later we saw uh, different uh, uh, leaders, we saw different uh, state officials also getting to that uh, particular scene, of course, parliament, uh, parliament buildings uh, to view the body. Of course, we also saw the DP, uh, we also see, saw the DP Deputy President William Ruto getting uh, to the parliament buildings to view the body among other uh, leaders, of course, among other uh, state officials and uh, other uh, leaders to other uh, state uh, organs. Remember also, uh, we saw also the judicial team also getting into that uh, particular scene, of course, led uh, by the Chief Justice, by the Chief Justice uh, Martha Kome, and later yesterday we saw uh, now the public getting there to view the body even as they pay their last respect uh, to the late uh, President uh, Mwai Kibaki. And of course today also the public continue to get to the scene of course parliamentary, parliament buildings uh, to view the body. But remember today is the last and the final day uh, for viewing especially in the, par in the parliament buildings. Uh, remember, the body will also be transferred, the body will also be taken to Nyaya Stadium uh, just before uh, it will be, just before it will be taken home for burial during uh, that particular time uh, the, on, in the Nyaya Stadium or Nyaya Sports Ground. Uh, that's where uh, leaders will be, you know, uh, giving their final attributes, of course, uh, tributes uh, to the late uh, president, of course. Uh, uh, President uh, Mwai Kibaki, not just leaders, not just political leaders, but at, at the same time, uh, publics also will get time to get there, even as the final respect will be paid to the late uh, President uh, uh, Mwai Kibaki, to the late President Mwai Kibaki. And at the same time, later, of course, the body will be uh, taken to the Othaya home, to the Othaya home, of course, the late uh, President Kibaki's home, where uh, the body will be laid to rest on uh, Saturday. That will be the 30th uh, day of the month of uh, April, of course, the year is 2022. Remember, President Mwai Kibaki will be offered a state burial. He will be uh, accorded a state burial. And remember, today today is also the state is mourning. And of course, this, uh, the question as we talk about your mourning of the president, the late president Mwai Kibaki, uh, what are some of the attributes, of course, you can uh, uh, make in reference to President Mwai Kibaki? Of course, we saw those uh, uh, members of the public, those citizens that were getting to the parliament buildings yesterday uh, to view the body, of course, most of the majority of them uh, talked about the issue of free. Uh, primary education, uh, saying that uh, President Kimbaki was such a uh, you know, uh, self-driven uh, 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 president or uh, that who was public-centered, uh, not uh, centered on his own interest, but uh, uh, centered on the interests of the public, of course, also uh, talking about economic development. Remember, those are some of the achievements that the publics that were getting to the scene or uh, that were getting to the parliament buildings to view the body uh, were terming that uh, President Kibaki really fought for. Of course, um, also for infrastructural development, also being mentioned as far as President Kibaki's uh, late, uh, you know, final respects are being given. Those are some of the sentiments, of course, some of the uh, contributions and attributions uh, that were being. Uh, given to President Mwai Kibaki, of course, yesterday by the uh, publics who are getting to the scene. Remember, uh, the, remember also we saw those uh, residents of Othai, of course, where President, where President uh, Kibaki comes from, of course, uh, Nyeri County were also 
giving their last respects, of course, uh, terming Kibaki as a, you know, a love of the, uh, of the members, of course, of the uh, members of the village. And so uh, they were saying that uh, they have lost uh, such a friendly uh, person, not just a, a national figure, but uh, as a friendly person even to their village as, uh, as members, uh, relatives, and even to the uh, neighbors. Those are some of the attributes, of course, that were being uh, made to present Mike back, of course, as the publics were giving their final or last uh, respect. Of course, yesterday, as they were getting there to view the body. Meanwhile, uh, moving to the next uh, story, of course, those that are um, uh, given way today, of course, we see 10 rows of ban. Uh, caught in, in uh, one of the boys' schools, of course, in Kisi County, uh, just on the first day as the students were reporting back to school uh, from home. Because this was a very uh, weighty story. Because we realized that uh, this could be uh, related to the indiscipline uh, cases, especially in uh, schools. Of course, uh, uh, this was the, 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 this uh, particular this culminated after a thorough search and investigation of course by the, uh, poli the, the by the police and the relevant stakeholders at that uh, particular school of course we now see police now investigate at uh, that uh, particular incident that particular incident because of course it's termed as that which is in discipline or uh, relating in, it's being related to discipline uh, cases rising once again in schools. It was just the first day uh, students were reporting back to school. And during that particular search, of course, they were being searched uh, before they can actually be ushered in. Then 10 rolls of ban were actually caught in one of the bags for those uh, uh, particular uh, students. But uh, what is the reaction of the parents, uh, especially parents to that particular school after that? Uh, a particular search or uh, after that uh, a particular incident because we see parents now the parents appreciate uh, that particular move and they are wooing teachers uh, for that uh, particular uh, for that particular move of course for that particular search saying uh, that it's a good move and that which is likely to see uh, that boys become disciplined and not just boys ladies too or girls also get to be disciplined enough. Of course, this, uh, uh, the, 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 the parents were very happy about uh, that uh, particular move that was taken by the schools. Of course, now they are, in, they are also indulging police in that uh, particular investigation so that uh, discipline cases could, uh, could arise or uh, in discipline cases could be minimized. Meanwhile, uh, the schools, uh, the boys and the girls to be uh, disciplined enough. And moving forward to the next story, of course, we see now uh, Raila promises enhancing uh, conducive business environment uh, between Kenya and diaspora countries. Of course, uh, United States of America being one. Remember, Raila uh, was been in his uh, 10 days tour, but to not be 10 days at, uh, as he had planned, of course, it will be back uh, be due to, uh, he'll be back ahead of the late President Mwai Kibaki's uh, burial. But yesterday, talking in the in Washington DC, of course, the United States of America, seem saying that, um, uh, we seem pro promising to enhance a conducive business environment between Kenya and uh, United States of America, and of course, uh, talking about the issue of unity, talking about uh, the issue of unity. Remember, Raila has been there for now four days, of course, uh, as he has been meeting the Kenyans that are living in diaspora, of course, ahead of his um, presidential campaign, ahead of his presidential campaigns, of course, eyeing the, the top seat when um, it comes to general elections, of course, in 9th of August 2022, uh, now saying that um, the issue of enhancing trade and, I uh, you know, trade and economic development uh, between Kenya and other diaspora countries 
is one of his agenda because uh, we've seen him also reiterating on international uh, trade and international uh, investment as one big uh, move that would, uh, that is likely to see economic development both in Kenya and not just in Kenya and other diaspora uh, countries and also he has reiterated on the issue of unity as that which is likely to you know foster the economic development between Kenya and other diaspora countries. Remember Raila uh, the other day he was also uh, he, earlier on he was expected that he will be meeting some of the top uh, uh, leaders who was also sharing his ambitions for uh, for presidential race of course and uh, is some of his plans even after uh, the general elections for 2022 of course uh, just form just three three months three months uh, ahead of course or four months ahead uh, just four months ahead at uh, the general election four months ahead and what are some of his plans or oh, sharing some of his plans especially even after the general election remember those are some of the those are some of the, the points of some of the issues uh, that the ODM leader has been uh, talking about uh, uh, back uh, there or talking about in his uh, tour uh, to the United States of America of course uh, we saw him addressing the Kenyans in diaspora of course those that are in the United States of course uh, selling his agenda and ideas especially uh, concerning the presidential race for 2022 of course the 9th August of 2022 general election and also the party primary is also another um, uh, another issue of course that is also topping in some of the top news stories of course during today's breakfast show because we saw uh, Sonko now given uh, the ticket uh, for the wiper party to run for the Nairobi uh, gubernatorial seat. Remember, remember initially Sonko was the uh, Sonko had been uh, the Nairobi governor before some of the before he was faced uh, with some of the scandals of course uh, some of the corruption scandals of course uh, misuse of the public office among other corruption charges that he was faced with but yet again uh, now we see he's back on the race after getting the ticket of course from the wiper uh, party from the wiper party these are some of the top news stories of course uh, uh, those that were given away today in the prefer show remember uh, this is the second bit of the show the show is the prefer show live from pure africa tv uh, pure africa radio my name is evan sudia remember those are some of the top news stories uh, that were captured but now soon we are getting uh, to the newspapers remember during the second bit of the show we'll be tackling the top news stories then later i'll get to the newspapers of course uh, looking at the various sections of course the politics section we look at uh, um, the business section of course we also get to look at what is transferring in our various counties and sub-county uh, level of course before we get to the third bit of the show and just to let you know remember we have the star a newspaper here we'll get to look at it of course we have the daily nation we have the standard of this we'll get to review even as we continue with the second bit of this uh, particular show but today getting to the third bit of the show of course uh, i'll be asking you a question the question that i'll be gathering your responses to is how you are prepared or how prepared are you as a parent or as a guardian especially uh, on this particular subject uh, or uh, on uh, uh, the alluding to the fact or uh, considering uh, the fact that uh, uh, KCPE candidates will now be reporting uh, to the next level of education of course to secondary schools uh, beginning from third day of the month of May 2022 we realize that uh, the academic calendar has been such a uh, fixed uh, calendar has been such a, a busy schedule and a fixed uh, calendar but how are you prepared that's um, of course that's a point or that's a subject uh, that we'll be talking about when we get to the third bit of the show remember the third bit of the show is uh, such a, an um, 
in such a participatory bit of the show of course uh, gathering your points gathering your ideas you gathering your opinions on that particular subject on the table because today we'll be talking about the matter of education uh, so you remember you can as well uh, begin thinking about that particular issue so that when we get to the third bit of the show of course what i'll be doing will be uh, to gather your comments of course on that uh, a particular subject as we continue even as we will be coming to the closure of the show i want to get to the third bit of the show meanwhile we are in the second bit of the show because uh, those have been some of the top news stories i'm taking a very short break uh, coming later we'll be getting to the newspaper of course we have the star newspaper we'll begin uh, with it and looking at the star we see raila ruto deputies kenneth waiguru top search but uh, that uh, makes all that forms the front page of this uh, particular newspaper of course that is the start the issue of uh, running mate now has been given emphasis on the front page of this uh, uh, particular newspaper continue saying with me i'm taking a very short break uh, later i'll be back with much more remember to follow us in our social media platforms of course our fan page facebook is pure africa tv youtube pure africa tv instagram pure africa tv where you can as well tweet at uh, pure africa tv hashtag breakfast show my name is evan so we are taking a very short break i'll be back with much more
Africa TV, Pure Africa Radio. My name is Evan Sobiambo. Remember, uh, we are in the second bit of this particular show. Of course, after getting the top news stories, uh, now we are getting to the newspaper. Of course, we have the Star uh, newspaper here to begin with. Looking at the Star newspaper, of course, looking at the front page, uh, Raila Ruto deputies, Kenneth Waiguru top search. Of course, the issue of deputies and the, the issue of deputies uh, the issue of running mate has been such a controversial subject, of course, um, looking at a lot of factors, of course, uh, to settle on the position of a running mate or who is suitable uh, to be a running mate to various, pol pol to various presidential flag bearers, of course. Uh, we've seen different coalitions, we've seen different parties uh, using uh, different tactics to settle on a suitable a presidential uh, running mate. Of course, we've seen in Azimiola Omoja, uh, they for, they have formed uh, they have currently formed a task force uh, that is taxed with that activity or with that responsibility of deciding uh, the fate of the running mate. Of course, we've seen predictions some of the leaders uh, that are likely to be most suited. Of course, earlier on, uh, we saw Peter Peter Kenneth, of course, former MP. Uh, for Gatanga, his name was proposed. Of course, we saw uh, NAC Kenya leader Mata Karua. We also saw Wiper Party leader Kanonzo Musioka. Of course, we also saw uh, Peter Munya, Cabinet Secretary for Agri Kaja, also proposed. At the same time, we also saw earlier Sanjuro uh, proposed. But now the question is who will take, we will see the lights of the day. Who will see the lights of the day, of course. Uh, that's now a question that all the Kenyans are asking themselves, of course, uh, and uh, the results or uh, the fate of the, the answer is to be given on 16th day of the month of May 2022. But look at the star, Raila Ruto deputies, uh, Kenneth uh, Waiguru, top search, of course, respectively, on the side, uh, on the side of... Uh, According to this particular analysis on the star, uh, look at the side of Raila. You see Peter Kenneth uh, listed there as the best suited uh, candidate for the running mate. Look at the side of Kenya Kwanza, of course, the side of Deputy President William Ruto. Uh, we see Anne Waiguru. Uh, but the fate of the, the final uh, fate of this is to be uh, decided on or is to be realized on 16th May 2022, 16th May uh, 2022, as the names uh, shall be presented uh, to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, of course, after the IEBC pushing the deadline uh, from Thursday, that is the 28th of month of April, uh, to, to 16th of month of May 2022. Let's wait and see the fate of this. That's a uh, a story that was given a lot of emphasis, of course, that uh, which has been covered here in the front page. Of course, you, you can remember late of late, uh, before of late, before before the deadline was pushed, uh, the, both the coalitions uh, reacted to that particular deadline, saying that it was such a short deadline owing to a serious decision that they will make, especially as far as the running mate point is concerned, they are uh, terming it as that, uh, uh, which is serious also. Uh, they just needed a lot of time to decide the fate of that, I mean, as they formulated a lot of tactics uh, to ensure that they get to settle on the best uh, suitable, on the best suitable running mate uh, for both the coalitions. Of course, looking at the image, you see Wafula, IEBC chairman, Wafula Chibukati there. Of course, we see, his, um, uh, former, uh, we will see all other delegates. Of course, so there are some uh, delegates for Kenya Kwanzaa. At the same time, uh, we see the delegates for Azimio La Umoja, one Kenya uh, coalition. Uh, moving forward to the next story captured in the star, we see uh, Kibaki maintains humble poise in death. No side shows. Uh, Kibaki maintains humble poise. Humble poise in death. No side shows. Because that's a story uh, that has been uh, captured there. And this is very relevant, especially uh, especially during this time that the board is being 
uh, viewed there because we've seen the public turning out in large numbers uh, to view the body because uh, earlier on as the, the as the exercise began we saw uh, of course uh, it began by president Uru Kenyatta leading uh, the state officials in viewing the body later we saw uh, deputy president getting there of course we also saw other uh, other state organs also getting there of course we saw the judicial team led by uh, Chief Justice Martha Kome. But now let's look at this. No, shide, no side shows. Uh, Kibaki maintains humble poise in the day. Was this a story that has been captured? They're looking at the image. Uh, the board is laid there, of course. Uh, President Uru Kenyatta is there. Among other state uh, dignitaries, of course, security is also there. Just as he lived, uh, so is the former President Mwai Kibaki in the day. Uh -huh. A humble and uh, concerned uh, with sideshows, uh, the economy. So of course, uh, uh, the bit of economy, the bit of economy, of course, that uh, is uh, one that was uh, reiterated again and again uh, by the publics, by the you know the leaders and the political leaders who are getting there to view the body. Of course, those that had even worked with President Mwai Kibaki, uh, saying that President Mwai Kibaki really, really. Uh, contributed a lot as far as the economy is concerned, as far as the growth of the Kenyan economy is concerned. So, uh, on the second day of uh, on the second day of lying in the state in Parliament, uh, Kibaki's body donned on ash grey suit and a blue printed tie and a white uh, shirt. Of course, uh, that's just a bit of the description of the body. Of course, we saw the same clothes. Uh, when the body was first brought in, in for in for public viewing or very similar colors and uh, prints this is however an issue for the state leaders who have never shied uh, from their elegant often expensive attire of course uh, a good example is given there for instance when the former president moi uh, was lying in the state uh, there was displayed. There was displayed of his taste of different designer suits, uh, like he did in life. On the first day of the public viewing, uh, this body donned on a black suit and a white shirt, accessorized uh, with a colorful tie, of course. And so, to Kibaki, uh, or, or to uh, the late President Kibaki, uh, no, sh no side shows. Kibaki maintains the humble poise in death just uh, as he lived just as he lived that's a story that is captured there and moving forward to the next to the story moving forward uh, to the next story of course there's this particular story um a civil servant on uh, 32 32 000 shillings net pay but with uh, 80 million fortune remember this was a very uh, this is uh, this a uh, story of course again on the rise on the rise of that uh, which is termed as a uh, very corrupt corruptive it's a uh, very corruptive because you know uh, going by somebody's earning uh, you of course uh, going by somebody's earning then you realize that uh, whatever he has in his bank account is uh, like triples or triples several times that which he answers. And so there's a question as to how he came uh, to get uh, such, a, uh, or, uh, such a lump sum amount of money. That's a story uh, that is captured here. Of course, uh, earlier on, remember the issue of, um, the issue of uh, uh, public audit or audit of um, some, uh, some, some of the uh, state office, office holders or some of the public. Uh, uh, servants, but now let's look at this particular story on this uh, uh, civil servant on 32 uh, 32,000 Kenya shillings per month net pay, but uh, with uh, 18 million fortune. Let's look at uh, uh, this uh, uh, particular story, of course, uh, captured here. Yeah, of course, this is a story that. Uh, uh, that is uh, revolving around uh, Samuel Kariuki Njoroge, of course. If Samuel Kariuki Njoroge was serving all his monthly earnings uh, from Environment Ministry, 
uh, since he was employed in January 2018, he would be earning or he would have six, uh, 600, 300, 632,000 shillings by the end of March 2022. Uh, but Njorovi received a staggering uh, 79,763,944 from the ministry in the post four years, attracting a suspicion uh, from the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission of a possible embezzlement of public funds. Of course, this is a story uh, that is being investigated by the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission, of course, is uh, that uh, which has a lot, that, that is alleged uh, to be very corruptive, to be that which is full of embezzlement of our public funds, of course, uh, the, fate is here, the fate of Nyoroge is yet to be decided on. The, the case is still being investigated. And uh, switching gears to the next story, of course, we see tough times ahead as maize prices uh, skyrocket. Of course, this will get to tackle when we get to the business uh, section, as we'll get to tackle when we get to the business section. Moving forward to the next story, now we see pain parties, of course, aspirants unacceptable. Pain parties, of course, aspirants unacceptable. Of course, uh, this uh, is related to the issue of uh, the party primaries and the issue of nominations. Of course, there are those who have received the favor of nominations, there are those that have been nominated. Yet again, uh, there are those who have failed in the nomination. But interestingly enough, you realize that there are those who the public were looking forward to being uh, uh, nominated or to getting the favor of nominations. But uh, um, on contrary, you, real, you realize that they have not uh, been nominated. The pain parties have caused aspirants unacceptable. Of course, going by the past. Um, activities, especially past events during the nomination, realized that it was such a, a chaotic, not just, a, it is such a chaotic activity in almost all the political parties, of course, we saw in the UDA, we saw in ODM, uh, we saw in the Wiper Party, of course, complaints over and over again, and even in other political parties. But now, let's look at this. Nothing captures the pain of a political party aspirants. Uh, better than the video of a man of parliamentary aspirant from Kisumu County uh, that have gone uh, vital, of course. But this uh, particular video has really gone vital. The mother had uh, really wished that uh, his son would uh, get the favor of nomination. Uh, but to their disappointment as a family, uh, the, the, the son never got and the favor of the nomination. Of course, the woman cries uncontrollably uh, while tightly holding her son. Why? Her son's competitor has been handed a direct ticket, uh, bringing to a screeching heart on her son's uh, building political career. But, uh, that's a story that has been, uh, that has really gone viral, of course, has been uh, seen trending on various social media platforms, of course. Uh, of course, has been seen trending on the various social media uh, platforms. But remember again, yet again, there's another option. There's another option, of course, uh, going as a, an independent candidate. Going as an independent candidate uh, could be and um, is another option, especially going by what was um, going by the deadlines that were you know, uh, given by the registrar of political parties that this time round. Uh, once you fail, you only have one option. No jumping from one political party to the next. The option is that uh, you either support that particular candidate who has received the favor of the nomination, or rather you decide to stand uh, or to go as an uh, independent candidate even as you face the ballot. Of course, we've seen uh, some of the candidates now getting... Uh, I know pursuing their political ambition and getting there as independent candidates, of course, uh, even as they face uh, the ballot. Uh, meanwhile, no moving from one political party uh, to the next. Moving on to the next story, because we see how as a new parties share shared Nairobi County MP seats. 
uh, there's a uh, there's a uh, that uh, particular regulation of course uh, uh, how as a new parties shared Nairobi County MP seats. Let's look at uh, uh, this particular story of course to see how these uh, parties go to share the seats. Of course, uh, we'll get to that particular story shortly. Of course, uh, we'll uh, get to that story shortly. Meanwhile, uh, we are moving to the next story. Mutai Nguni, of course, Mutai Nguni Raila's deputy uh, should be Karua. Remember, suggestions have been uh, going over and over, of course, from different uh, political leaders, from different uh, political analysts, of course, uh, from the public as to who. Uh, is the suitable running mate for the Azimio la Umoja one Kenya uh, flag bearer ODM leader as well, Raila Moludinga. But that's a question that has been asked over and over again, of course, uh, predictions over and over again emanating uh, from um, political analysts, uh, you know, political leaders as well. Uh, some um, of the publics who are aligned to different political parties of various uh, political uh, for to various political leaders of course now we see Mutai Nguni saying Raila's deputy uh, should be Martha Karua but why Karua because uh, that's another question remember it's uh, now the role of the task force to uh, to decide and of course going by some of the proposals by that uh, particular task force realize that Martha Karua is there among others uh, among them uh, Kalonzo Musioka of, uh, of uh, Wiper Party, of course, uh, we have Peter Kenneth, the former MP for Gatanga, of course, we have Peter Munya, uh, Agriculture Cabinet Secretary. At the same time, Alia Sanjo also proposed uh, there. But let's look, uh, let's wait and see uh, the fate of it all, especially when uh, they shall be presented or when the names shall be presented. Uh, uh, to the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, of course, on uh, on the 16th day of the month of May 2022, when this particular fate will be decided, uh, will be decided, of course, the final decision will be made on that. Of course, uh, we see cops pray for God to give their boss backbone. Uh, also a story that is captured there. Remember, some of these uh, this stories, uh, we'll get to revisit them again, some of them, especially those uh, that have just given the top highlights, we'll get to revisit them once again and see uh, some, uh, look at them into details, of course, as the various events, uh, so they see, see some of the details that transpire in this particular uh, stories. Meanwhile, I'm taking a very short break. Uh, coming back, we'll be getting to the business uh, section. Remember, we have a lot also in the business section, of course. Uh, we see now the issue of uh, prices of maize now rise. Tough times ahead. That's one of the stories uh, that is captured there. Of course, I'm taking a very short break. Uh, after a short while, I'll be back and then as we get to the business section. Remember, the county section it's also there we'll get to revisit the county section to see uh, what is transferring from our county level, of course, from the sub-counties and, of course, uh, from the village level. Remember, this is the destination of your choice uh, for both local and international content as well, local international entertainment, local entertainment as well. And so continue staying with me. I'm taking a very short break. I'll be back uh, with much more. Remember to follow us in our social media platforms. Of course, our fan page, Facebook is Pure Africa TV, Instagram Pure Africa TV, YouTube uh, Pure Africa TV. Once you get to YouTube, do not forget to subscribe. And when you subscribe, uh, you'll be at a position of getting all the latest notifications and information updates, uh, both from Pure Africa TV and at the same time uh, from Pure Africa Radio. Remember also, uh, to get to download your Pure Africa TV official application, simply uh, get to your Google Play Store App Store and type their Pure TV official app, and there you'll be good to go having our Pure Africa TV official app. Having that particular application, of course, will make you be at a position of getting all the latest information updates from Pure Africa TV 
and not just that you can as well uh, be able to follow your favorite movies and series from pure africa tv and so i uh, continue staying with me taking a very short break shortly i'll be back uh, uh, with uh, much more <music>
live from Pure Africa TV, Pure Africa Radio. My name is Evan Sodiamo. Remember, we are in the second bit of this particular show. Of course, we looked at the politics section. Of course, uh, now we are switching gears and moving to the next section. Of course, the business uh, section. But before that, of course, going by the comment section. Thank you very much, Madam Melody. I see your comment following. Thank you very much for choosing the breakfast show. And now getting to the business section, getting to the business section, because uh, the issue of uh, maize prices is also on the rise again, of course, uh, the maize prices is, has been increasingly uh, rising of late, of course, that's a story uh, that is captured here. But let's look at uh, uh, one of the top stories that is captured under this uh, particular section, of course, uh, the business section, tough time for consumers as dollar shortage limits imports. Of course, uh, this, the shortage is now forcing importers now into the black market. There's a story uh, that is captured, of course, under this particular section, of course, uh, under the business uh, section. Because now manufacturers are struggling uh, to raise enough dollars at a higher cost to bring in raw materials as an aspect likely uh, to push up the cost of living. Because yesterday we saw the Kenya Association of Manufacturers, uh, also known as CAM, uh, the chairperson Mukai Kihanya now saying uh, that members are finding it too difficult. Members are finding it too difficult to mobilize 100,000 US dollars, of course, from local traders uh, staining relationship with external uh, suppliers. Remember, this is a story uh, that uh, is again on the rise, of course. We saw the same uh, yesterday. We saw the same yesterday and captured again uh, today. Of course, the persisting uh, dollar shortage is now forcing the importers now back in, into the black market, of course, to make up uh, the liquidity for the supply. That's a story that has been given a lot of weight, of course, in the business uh, section. But now let's switch gears and look at uh, the next story that is also given coverage in the, of course, the, in the business section. Uh, we see leasing dry spell as NSE passes uh, both local and foreign. Of course, that's a story uh, that is also captured. Then uh, moving forward, now we see state to lift ban on scrapped metal dealing gradually from uh, first of May. Remember the issue of scrapped metal was that which was very controversial because I remember back then President Uru Kenyatta uh, made it illegal dealing in a scrapped metal or trading on scrapped metal and that uh, came after it was realized that there was vandalism on uh, some uh, on some government projects or on some uh, uh, government projects that are made of scrap metals or, or made of metals, of course, uh, we saw the attack on ISGR and other other projects, of course, on other government projects that are made of metals uh, that made President Uru Kenyatta to call off the dealing of the trade on scrap metal because it was assumed that these individuals of these uh, uh, particular thieves in court uh, could attack this particular project, then get for themselves the craft metals, and uh, then go deal on them as they trade on them. But uh, good news again, uh, uh, which could be a bad news yet again uh, for some of the individuals now that it is uh, to be lifted again beginning on 1st of May, this is 2022. Let's look at it. Uh, let's uh, look at it, of course. Uh, this is likely to come from the Ministry of Industrialization of Industry, of course, a state to lift ban on scrap metal dealings gradually uh, from May. Of course, it will not be once, but a gradual lifting uh, from stage to stage. Now, the government will gradually lift its ban on scrap metal dealing uh, starting from the 1st of May 2022. Because we see the industrialization cabinet secretary Betty Maina says from May a uh, trading in scrap metal will be confined to only those who are duly uh, licensed. Of course, there will be that bit of the uh, regularization and the bottlenecks uh, so that if you want to deal on scrap metal beginning on May, 
be ensure that uh, you have the licenses of course uh, relevant licenses to deal on that of course undertaking a scrap metal trade without license will now cost a fine of 10 million kenya shillings to first offenders and up to the five years of imprisonment uh, for the second time offenders of course uh, thus according to the industrialization cabinet secretary uh, betty maina on that though the lifting will be there of course beginning from the first of may uh, but it will be on uh, uh, some terms of course regulations are there to deal in the scrap and the scrap metals of course you must be licensed failure to that uh, there's that fine of course also imprisonment terms these are some of the stories of course that are featuring today in the business section but moving forward to the next story of course we see uh, feed, uh, feed prices go up by 400 shillings in one month feed and millers now say of course this also related to the price of the maize or uh, to the maize prices that are seen to be raised or uh, that are seen to be rising eventually and going up or going higher and higher now let's look at this of course uh, price of animal feeds has increased by 400 uh, shillings in a span of one month uh, of course this is a statement from the feed manufacturers association of course uh, they are terming this particular hike in the prices of feed to increase of the maize price of course of late you realize that uh, uh, the maize prices as well increased of course not just maize prices but other food commodities of course looking at the maize prices realize that uh, uh, now one tin goes for 120 shillings uh, plus and that has also seen the rise in the animal feed product has seen the rise on animal feeds products but these are some of the stories of course uh, that were given emphasis on this uh, particular section of course uh, this is the uh, this is the uh, business section this is the business section remember as soon we are getting to this county section but before we get to the county section i'll keep on reminding you on the today's uh, discussion the today's discussion when we get to the third bit of the show of course uh, so that you begin thinking about it uh, so that when you get to the third bit of the show uh, just be gathering your ideas especially as far as the subject of the discussion the table today is concerned remember today getting to the third bit of the show i'll be gathering your ideas on how prepared you are as a guardian or as a guardian or as a parent uh, to kcpe candidates who will be reporting uh, to school of course to the secondary level of education uh, beginning from uh, the third day third may third may third day of the month of may remember they were to begin they were to begin reporting us from the second may but going by the fact that during that particular day there will be that uh, holiday of course by of the, the holiday of Eid ul fitr uh, then it was to be postponed or it was to be pushed ahead to third but the question is are you prepared how are you prepared how are you prepared as a guardian how are you prepared as a parent especially going uh, by the busy schedule going by the fixed uh, timeline especially as far as the academic calendar is concerned for the year 2021-2022 especially for those that did kcpa examination and those uh, that did the kcse examination how are you prepared how are you prepared but this um uh, this is a subject that we'll be talking about when we get to the third bit of the show because i'll be gathering your opinions i'll be gathering your viewpoints i'll be gathering your ideas as we will get uh, uh, to that uh, particular point of course soon when we transit uh, to the third bit of the show meanwhile we're in the second bit of the show of course uh, continue following us in our social media platforms facebook pure africa tv twitter at pure africa tv hashtag remember tweeting hashtag is the breakfast uh, uh, show hashtag breakfast show because i'll be getting your tweets i'll be reading them now let's uh, switch gears and proceed uh, to the county level to see some of the stories that are given emphasis 
uh, because those particular stories that are transferring from our counties level, from our village levels, of course, uh, from the sub counties as uh, well. Looking at the counties level, of course, um, uh, we see farm hand picked by running mate, uh, says Matenge. Farm hand picked uh, by running mate, says Matenge. Of course, the Nyeri governor aspirant uh, names Esther Wanjiru uh, Maina lecturer as his deputy. Of course, remember also now the governors are now being also they are now on the on that uh, particular decision they are uh, also struggling making decisions uh, to name suitable running mates for themselves of course remember on the uh, 16th day of the month of may uh, they are they are uh, you know of course required by the iebc to present the names of their running mates not just the governors but then presidents of those that are um, of, uh, those are uh, bearing the flags uh, for the presidential races to various coalitions and so uh, to the governors they are uh, required to name their or to present uh, their running mates when uh, the 16th day of the month of May uh, shall come and so we see uh, Madenge on the rise again of course for the Nyeri Banatorio seat now farmer picked my running mate says Nyeri aspirant let's look at this particular story of course uh, from the nyeri county remember we are in the uh, county section now we see nyeri gubernatorial hopeful uh, to madenge says his running mate uh, was recommended by his farm hand of course mudenge who is vying for the new democrats party ticket uh, named esther wanjiru maina a lecturer at uh, karatina university as his uh, running mate of course uh, he said his farm and uh, his farm and was employed at a uh, area in uh, Madeira where Maina comes from and uh, must have known her well. <laughs> so people have different, uh, they realize that uh, different uh, gubernatorial aspirants or hopefuls and uh, even the presidential uh, flag bearers have different tactics uh, for choosing on their running mess, of course. Uh, to others to be yes, it will be that which will take a very long process uh, but to others like um, uh, from the uh, others like Nyeri gubernatorial aspirant of Kozuma Denge would be such an easy task to decide uh, the fate of his uh, uh, running mate that's a story that has been also covered there of course the issue of running mate is on the rise again is on the rise again but good news uh, to the gubernatorial aspirants or to the gubernatorial hopefuls as well as the presidential hopefuls as the deadline was uh, you know pushed forward or as the deadline was postponed uh, from thursday of course uh, 28th of april 2022 uh, to 16th of may uh, 2022 of course the entire fate of the running mate will be decided and of course presented to the IEBC camp at that particular day. Moving forward to the next story, of course, under the county section, we see pressure on Ruto uh, to name Waiguru running mate. Pressure on Ruto uh, to name Waiguru running mate. Another story uh, that has been captured. Of course, now we see the youth say that um, uh, Governor Aiwan Waiguru has experience, has a lot of qualifications and has really uplifted Kirinyaga and so uh, she is the most suitable running mate for the deputy president William Ruto as far as the 9th August polls are concerned of course let's look at um, uh, this particular story remember the issue of running mate as is that which has been uh, reacted to by various politicians of course by various uh, political analysts by various publics those uh, uh, that are aligned to different uh, uh, political parties. Now we see the youths on the rise again. The youths allied to Kenya Kwanza are on the rise again, pushing for the Kenyaga governor and Mumbi Waiguru uh, to be the running mate. Of course, we, sh we see uh, pressure is mounting on Deputy President William Ruto uh, to pick Kenyaga governor and Mumbi Waiguru as his running mate, especially uh, Rift Valley. 
because uh, the, the, the pressure is emanating, especially from Rift Valley region. Of course, we see now uh, more than 600 members of the North Rift uh, chapter of the Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance Youthful League uh, met in Eldoret and, of course, also endorsed Governor Waiguru as the most uh, suitable candidate uh, qualified for the running mate position, of course, uh, for the Deputy President William Ruto ahead of the 9th August polls, of course, eyeing the top uh, uh, seat. And so they are, pro they are proposing that uh, Governor Anne Mungiwa Guru is the best suited candidate uh, to, be, uh, to be Dr. William Ruto's running mate ahead of the 2022, of course, uh, presidential uh, race bust. Well, let's wait and see, of course, the entire fate of the running mate will be decided uh, by William Ruto, by Dr. William Ruto, of course, as far as uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa is concerned. Yet again, we see a section of uh, leaders, not just leaders, and even the supporters, those that are aligned to our ANC, Amani National Congress, are now pushing that Musali Mudavadi is the best suitable candidate for DP William Ruto. Remember, uh, coming to the issue of running mate, there are various um, uh, viewpoints or there are uh, various points and uh, various um, uh, you know, opinions on the uh, uh, various points that will be looked at or that will be given weight of course. Uh, remember the issue of regional balance, remember the issue of gender, remember the issue of uh, popularity of course uh, as well as the issue of vote reach region the issue of regional balance will also be looked at because uh, they will settle on uh, uh, looking at uh, the issue of regional balance they realize that the presidential flag bearer will pick uh, you know a running mate from uh, that particular region that is uh, likely uh, to, to attract a lot of votes coming from at that uh, particular region but yet again looking at the popularity look at the popularity of that uh, particular individual of that particular leader as to whether he is popular and he is suitable for that political position also uh, the issue of running mate is such a contested issue such a controversial issue uh, but finally the issue will get the fate will get to be uh, decided of course uh, mostly by the presidential hopefuls, presidential uh, flag bearer, especially as far as Kenya Kwanzaa is concerned. But yet again, as Miola Omoja One Kenya Coalition, the task force will decide the fate of that as uh, well. And moving forward to the next story, because we see young by age, mature by heart, says good teacher, MCA aspirant, because now we see 26 year old, uh, will be contesting on a jubilee party because uh, for the 2022 general election of course we've seen a lot of youths we've seen a lot of youths coming up especially in the reef, uh, especially in the we saw uh, then again another youth on the rise again I'm young by age but mature at heart says aspirant as he was Mandera boss of course uh, we've seen even in the North Rift Valley region, we've seen uh, youths coming up because that's a, a plus uh, to the youths and saying that's now the time uh, for the youths to take, uh, it's now the time for the youths uh, to take lead. And of course, we've seen also a, a section of the public, a section of the Kenyan citizens uh, wooing the youths for the same, saying that uh, the youths are the best uh, suited for the political positions because they are not uh, aligned to any scandal. They have not uh, been aligned to any scandal and so they are still fresh uh, from the faith. Of course we've seen in other political parties and various political parties the youth have uh, gone ahead to the extent of getting the favor of the nominations. Of course we have a good number of youths that have been nominated to various political positions under various political uh, parties. But now let's look and wait as, as, um, to see if they'll actually uh, proceed until uh, they get to be elected, even as uh, the general election will be conducted. Now we see 26-year-old 
Hussein Ahmed Sheikh has joined the race for Wuticha MCA in Mandera, of course, Mandera County. It's also Cup Chan. The Wuticha AMC of full who said is the only young by age but mature at heart is very optimistic for clinching that particular position of course uh, the political seat for the good teacher ward mca of course the clinic officer was awarded the jubilee ticket alongside mandela gubernatorial aspirant uh, former cs adan mohammed uh, so we see the youths are on the rise again of course Another story that is captured on that um, uh, particular um, on that uh, particular section, of course. Then moving forward to the next story, of course, we see Behiga County is also captured under this particular section, of course, the county section. Um, family in Behiga governor race, as uh, say, of course says Marende, because we see now Marende again on the race, uh, saying that his family in a vehicle gubernatorial race that is a uh, um, uh, Marende. Of course, uh, the former National Assembly Speaker Kenneth Marende uh, says his family in the vehicle gubernatorial race and will soon launch his campaigns. Remember, uh, he has not yet begun his campaign, he has not yet uh, officially begun his campaigns, but uh, has just uh, given notification that is on the race. Of course, Marende on Monday told the said said uh, that uh, his, pre his previous attempts, of course, to officially uh, launch his campaigns were fatal, but he remains in the race and soon will uh, introduce his um, his campaigns officially. Of course, the former Mohai MP has been on the has been on and off in the campaigns trail after failing to officially launch his campaigns on April 5th or 5th of, of April as he had previously scheduled. Of course, uh, there are uh, different uh, politicians. Of course, we also saw uh, state officials now getting to uh, campaigns, especially in the gubernatorial race. But let's wait and uh, see the fate of it, of course, will be decided in the real time. And finally, uh, will be settled, of course, by you as a Kenyan citizen. You'll get to decide the fate of all of them, especially after the general election. What you need to do, just get to vote. Get to vote and you'll finally decide the fate of them. Of course, to vote in your leaders of the desired interests, of course, uh, those that you are interested in and those who you feel as a Kenyan citizen and you as a voter, those leaders that are likely uh, to bring uh, developmental projects, of course, those uh, leaders of the change. Because each and every time during the elections and even after elections, Kenyans have been talking about change, change, change and development. But now it's upon you to decide. Remember, you are the voter. You are the one to decide the fate of all these leaders. And that is what we had in the county section. Uh, remember soon we are getting to the third bit of the show and today getting to the third bit of the show uh, the big question is how are you prepared you as a guardian you as a parent how are you prepared uh, in ensuring that um, you know, candidates for KCPE or uh, those that search for their KCPE examinations will translate at the next level of education of course the secondary level especially considering the tight schedule as far as the educational calendar is concerned. Remember, uh, that's what we are talking about, especially now in the third bit of the show. Continue dropping your comments, your tweets, of course, in our fan page, Facebook, Pure Africa TV, Instagram, Pure Africa TV, uh, YouTube is Pure Africa TV as well. You can drop your comment uh, in our comment section, of course, uh, following through our Pure Africa TV official love of course your comments will be getting especially now that we are getting to the third bit of the show such a participatory bit of the show share with me how you as a parent you as a guardian are pre is prepared you not know, to face this tight schedule of the education calendar for 2021 for 2021 2022 especially for the candidates who sat for the examinations uh, for primary uh, 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 of course, uh, KCPE examinations and those that search for KCSE 
examination. That's what we are talking about today in the third bit of the show because um, taking a very short break coming after uh, we'll even be getting back as I get your comments, uh, read your comments uh, before we call it a brief show. Meanwhile, continue staying with me, follow us, of course you can as well tweet, hashtag remember uh, it's the breakfast show. You can as well tweet at Pure Africa TV, hashtag breakfast show. Taking a very short break I'll be back uh, with much more as we get to the third bit of the show. My name is Evans Obiambo, and uh, this is the Breakfast Show live from Pure Africa TV, Pure Africa Radio. Even as we get uh, to finalize, of course, the third bit of the show. This is the time now to go through the comment section, of course, uh, to look at some of the comments as we come to the end of the show. Of course, by going by my comment section, of course, I see a good number of comments. I just uh, read but a few, especially considering the subject of today's discussion. Thank you very much, of course, this Moses. Uh, from Kiambu County saying that we as parents are prepared though on the side of finance is challenging a bit. Uh, thank you very much Moses. Of course moving forward that's Emelda uh, Tieno uh, from Kisumu saying uh, I wish they would extend the, uh, the reporting date. Of course uh, there's uh, that particular comment and finally uh, there's that um, a particular comment from uh, Victor Ocon because saying uh, that uh, finance is the problem. Thank you very much, of course, uh, for commenting and participating in the third uh, bit of uh, the show. Remember today we've been talking about uh, uh, the issue of that tight deadline, especially uh, right now owing to the fact that our candidates, of course, those, those who sat for their KCPA examinations are set uh, to join the second level of education as from 3rd of May. But amid, but um, of course, despite that, um, uh, despite that uh, uh, fixed deadline, that despite the fixed deadline, of course, also considering the financial uh, challenges, tough economy, and uh, all those. And so that has been the third bit of the show. Thank you, of course, for joining me and staying with me since the first bit of the show, second bit of the show, and of course, for your participation the third bit of the show. Remember to join me tomorrow again, exactly at 7 o'clock in the morning. My, my name is Evan Soviambo. Also continue staying with us and get the next programs of the Pure Africa TV. Stay with me always. Stay with us always. Uh, join me tomorrow and remember to keep safe. Bye for now.